Hello and welcome back. Today we're working on configuring SSH and that's Packet Tracer 2.2.1.4. This is a great exercise. In addition to using commands that you will use throughout your career, it also begins to introduce you to other components, Telnet, uh, logging in SSH. Um, it's really a pretty cool lab. So let's get started. So as always, here's our addressing table. We have a PC and a switch, three objectives and the background, which I will let you read on your own time. As always, a link to the uh, PKA file is included in the description. Let's get started. Part one, secure passwords. Using the command prompt on PC1, tell net to switch one. All right, so we'll go to PC1, desktop, command prompt, and we will tell net to switch one. And the address for switch one is 10.10.10.2. All right, so now we are requested or prompted for a password. And it tells us here that user exec and privilege exec are s both the same password, Cisco. Now we can type en for enable and oops, password again. Remember that you don't see any movement or any kind of characters filled in for password, it's just hidden. All right, great. So the first thing, or the next thing it says, save the current configuration so that any mistakes you make may be reversed by toggling the power. So this would be turning the power off and back on again in order to reset it up to whichever point we're going to do. And we're going to do that now. So, and the way we do that is to do a copy run start and it'll ask us for the destination we just hit enter and now it's built to configuration so if the power if we were to cycle the power this would be the point we come back to okay now show the current configuration and note that the passwords are in plain text plug, uh, if I can read plain text and enter the command that encrypts plain text passwords. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we do that with a show run or a show running config. And we can see that our first password, our enable password is Cisco in plain text. And then if we go to the end, we have no line console password, but our VTY, both 0 through 4 and 5 through 15, are also Cisco. All right, so we have demonstrated there in plain text. Now we need to enter the command that encrypts plain text passwords. And we do that with service. Ah, excuse me. First, we got to get into config mode. And we do that with config T. And now, which is short for configure terminal, now we can do the service password encryption and we hit enter. And now if we do a show run, oops, we, when you're in configure terminal mode, we need to use the do command, do show run. And now our enable password is encrypted. And if we go to the end, we'll also see that our VTY passwords are encrypted, excellent. All right, so we have encrypted plain text, we have verified encryption, and now we're at 20%. All right, good job. Part two, encrypt communications. So now it says uh, step one to set the IP domain name and generate secure keys. It is not generally safe to use Telnet. And the reason is that the text transferred is plain text. We all hear about this, especially when we're talking about, you know, uh, HTTP versus HTTPS. And in this case, when we log in for production in the real world, we should always use SSH. Okay, and that's secured. 
So the first thing we need to do is configure a domain name. And we can do that by saying oops, IP domain dash name. And here we want netacad.pka. All right. So now we've set the domain name. The next thing is to secure keys that are needed. And the command for that is crypto. And remember, with the CLI, you can, Cisco will recognize commands as soon as they are uniquely different from other commands and you can autocomplete using the tab. When you're unsure of commands, type a couple of letters and see if it'll tab. So notice here if I said CR tab, it'll already find crypto for us. Key, and if you're stuck also you have the question mark and it will tell you what goes next. Generate or zeroize. In this case we want to generate and what do we want to generate? We can look here again. We want RSA, which is the only option. Great. And it says here that we want a 1,024-bit key length. Now it asks us and provides the minimum of 512, but if we want to modify that, we can. So we'll put in 1,024. And notice that it has generated the 1,024-bit RSA keys and they went, went well. All right, next we want to create an SSH user and reconfigure the VTY lines for SSH only access. So we want to create a user with Cisco as the secret password. So we can say user and we want to create what, a user name one of the nice things about Cisco is most of the commands are fairly intuitive. Okay? And we call that administrator. administrator. Uh, we want to use secret. And notice it tells us it's enabled. And we want the password to be Cisco. Okay, great. The next thing we want to do is config configure the VTY lines to check that the local username database for login credentials and to only allow SSH. Okay, now how do we do that? First, let's go back here to our do show run. We can go down. So we have, notice our VTY lines, they have a password and they're for login, but what we want is local login right here. So we need to get into our VTY. We do that with line VTY 0 to 15. And we want to say login local. We want it to use the local database, which is what we just created right here. And then finally, we want it to Let's see here. Uh, we want the only to allow SSH, and that's through the transport. If you can think about it, what do we want to allow to communicate or transport? So we say transport. We want the input to be a SSH. Excellent. And then finally, we want to remove the existing VTY line password, and we can say no password and the password was Cisco and that should be everything notice we've completed the score there 100 of 100 so that's great however we still have more that we need to do so it says to exit the telnet session right and try to log back in again okay so we can go ahead and say exit 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 and now we're back to a C prompt. And now we can try Telnet 10.10.10.2. And you notice that it tries it, and the connection is dropped right away. We'll try it one more time, and we can do it again. So it drops it right off the bat. And then it says, attempt to log in using SSH. 
So uh, SSH, and it says to hit enter, and it tells you how you need to set this up. So you need SSH dash L, and they make a point of that saying that it's an L, not one. The username and the target. The target is the IP address. So we can say SSH dash L. The username is administrator. And the target, again, is 10.10.10.2. Excellent. Now we have a connection. We can type in our password. And we are golden. So uh, let's see. Upon um, successful login, enter privilege exec mode and save the configuration. The last thing we want to do is save it again. And so we can say copy, run, start. It'll ask us where. Excellent. So now if we toggle off the power, it will uh, come back and everything is still set up. I hope this made sense to you and has helped you understand a little bit about SSH logging in using the different uh, connection protocols. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. And thank you very much. If you like this video, uh, please like and subscribe. And as always, happy coding.